economically maintainable solutions from start to finish for our clients. Our designs meet or exceed safety and operational requirements at all levels of government while preserving the aesthetic, historic, or cultural resources of an area. AGE proudly sponsors Lincoln County High School Sports. AGE Engineering, engineering Kentucky's future. Animal Care Center has been serving pet lovers in the Stanford area since 1969, offering comprehensive veterinary care for the total well-being of your pet. Here at Animal Care Center, our mission is to provide quality medical and surgical care in a compassionate environment. Dr. Jonathan Alford and staff are sensitive to the care and concern that each client brings to our practice for his or her pet. Animal Care Center, located at 850 Highway 27 North in Stanford. We care for your pets like they are our own. What if you could shorten the runway to your career success because you personalized your online graduate program to work with your busy schedule? Now you can with a graduate degree earned from Asbury University. Begin your graduate journey now. Asbury.edu slash graduate. Between the Creeks Kennels and Boarding is a retreat for your pets. Located between the Creeks on Kentucky Highway 1247 in Stanford, we offer a safe, clean, and climate-controlled environment just like home. As a family-owned and operated business, we are committed to the highest quality of care for your fur baby. We'll keep your pet for just a few hours or for several days. Check us out at our Facebook page at Between the Creeks Kennels and Boarding or call or text 606-669-2986. It's me, Deputy Fife again, and I'm getting ready for the big game this weekend. You know who's missing the action? The folks at Bluegrass Drugstore. Well, they're so busy because folks keep heading there for the flu shots they need this year. Don't you miss the game or miss visiting Bluegrass Drugstore if you need a flu shot. I'll be at the game watching the action. I mean working. Yeah, working. Just like those folks at Bluegrass Drugstore off North 127 Bypass in Danville. Danville's deal maker, Bob Allen. Save more during Ram Truck Month at Bob Allen Motor Mall. Lease a new 24 Ram 1500 Crew Cab Night Edition 4x4 for only $2.99 per month for 42 months. $3,000 plus first payment taxes and fees due at signing, 7,500 miles per year. Stock C24168, lease loyalty required. Bob Allen Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram on Maple Avenue in Danville or shop online anytime at BobAllenMotorMall.com. 12th Region Basketball, presented by Bob Allen Motor Mall. Game two, as both teams are on the court warming up. Below us right now is Mercer County and Rock Astle County. Mercer County comes in at 18 and 13 on the season. They beat East Jessamine 69 to 39 and 69 to 68 over West Jessamine to claim the 46th district championship. They are five and five in their last 10 games. Rock Castle County comes in at 20 and 11. They beat Somerset in round one, 67-25. They lost to Pulaski County in overtime in the championship game, 44 to 43. They are also five and five in the last 10 ball games. Mercer County is averaging 58 points per game, giving up 51. Rock Castle County is averaging 62 points per game, giving up 48. Larry, you have seen Mercer County several times this year. Uh, give us the scouting report on the Lady Titans. Well, they are a really good team. They got the player of the year in the 12th region, and Anna Drakeford, who's the second all-time leading scorer at uh, Mercer County. Uh, she also has a record for assist in a season, broke her own record this year. She averages almost 26 points a game, six rebounds, five and a half assists, 3.2 steals. As I said, scored almost 2,200 points, has close to 700 rebounds, over 500 assists, close to 300 steals. Shot 22 free throws in the district championship game, so she handles the ball a lot and gets to the foul line. They have uh, one of the best freshmen in the region, and Izzy Carlton, who's just, just terrific. You will like watching her, I think. And then their three-point shooter is Sarah Dunn, who hit six of nine from three-point range in the loss to Rock Castle County. So they've got uh, a pretty good mixture of things that they have. And you know, Tim, they have won the district, the 46 16 years in a row. Wow. The, last, the last year they lost the district was in 2008 
when the Mercer coach, Haley Spivey, was still in school. That was her senior year. And since then, with Chris Souter, and now since Haley took over for him, they have not lost a district in, since 2008. So a, a terrific team. You're going to enjoy watching them. Now, Rockcastle, I've watched them several times, too, and they, they've they got a, a more balanced. Uh, Mercer's point's basically going to come from Drakeford, Dunn, and Carlton. That's who they're going to come from. Now, with uh, Rockcastle, they've got a few more players that can score and do a few things for, for you. Neither team is great from the three-point line. Dunn is the best three-point shooter of the bunch, but neither team is great from there. So we will see how that kind of turns out. But Spivey's a really nice player for them. Uh, Shear is a nice player, averages close to, I think, 14 points, close to eight rebounds a game. And, of course, they got one of the best coaches ever in the 12th region in Christy Noble. She's certainly been there and seen it all and done all that in winning a state championship before. Macy Spivey is averaging 16 points and five rebounds. Taylor Shear at 14 points, 7.6 rebounds, and Taylor King at 13 points. You mentioned Anna Drakeford at 26, but Rockcastle County seems to do it by committee with a 16-point score, a 14-point score, and a 13-point score. And then you also throw in for Mercer County uh, Sarah Dunn with 11.4 points and Izzy Carlton with 11 points. Point four points. I'd like to also let everyone know that this um, the 12th Region Girls Basketball offered the uh, individual schools to sell some sponsorship, and they could uh, keep the money for their basketball team. And they sold some of those. And we'd like to thank uh, Impartial uh, tonight making this broadcast um, possible. Citizens Bank. Check out their website at citizensbankrb.com. Army National Guard, good luck to all the student athletes. Stuart Powell Ford Mazda, we make it easy. 859 236 8917. Himes Body Shop, located at 53 Stanford Street in Lancaster. Thompson's Pharmacy, located at 3004 Harrodsburg. Call them at 859 734 3004. And Sailor Concrete, commercial or residential, call Joe Sailor at 859-302-0252. One game in the books. DCA defeated Wayne County 61-47. When we return, Mercer County will call. We'll have the next game between Mercer County and Rockcastle on WPBK FM 102.9. Dr. Powell, the community's trusted dentist since 2014, offers a comprehensive dental care with a touch of luxury. In his state-of-the-art facility, you can get a crown in a day, brighten your smile with in-office whitening, or even indulge in lip filler or anti-aging treatments with Javot. Open Monday to Thursday from 7 to 5, gladly accepting new patients with most major insurances. To schedule your appointment, give us a ring at 606-282-4607. Cedar Creek Dental, creating smiles that last a lifetime. Hungry for lunch? Looking for something different? Something fast? Stop by Coleman's Drugstore in Delhi. Coleman's is more than a drugstore. It's the perfect meeting place for those of us who want lunch at a snap. Coleman's has different lunch specials daily. They're serving up hot, home-cooked southern dishes to sandwiches and wraps. And oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention my very favorite part of their menu. Homemade desserts. Mmm. What are you waiting on? Coleman's is located right in the heart of downtown Stanford. Your local hometown drugstore in Delhi. Cornerstone Realty and Auction in Lancaster will make your dreams come true. Broker and owner Dionica Asbury and her team are ready to help you reach the real estate finish line. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or selling your existing home, navigating real estate can be tough. Let Cornerstone Realty and Auction make it easy. Specializing in Garrett, Lincoln, and surrounding counties, they're your local real estate experts. Cornerstone Realty and Auction, 859-329-8193. Since 1957, Durham's Grocery at 606 Lancaster Street in Sanford has been serving Stanford and the surrounding community with a full line of groceries, fresh meats, quality produce, and a full-service deli with homemade salads. They offer money orders and are also a payment center for KU, Atmos Energy, AT&T, and more. For fast, friendly service all the way to your car, Durham's Grocery is big enough to accommodate, small enough to appreciate. That's Durham's Grocery. During the good times in life, such as a promotion or the birth of a new baby, who do you call to share in your excitement? You call a friend. 
During the difficult times in life, such as the loss of a loved one, who do you call for support and comfort? You call a friend. John David and Mary Benton Friend, your friends in funeral service. We also offer a full line of monument products. Contact us anytime, 365-2670 or 379-2011. Guardian Exterminating and Bee Green Lawn Care, your total weed and pest control experts, offer many services like seeding and fertilizing and termite and pest control. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Call them today for an inspection of your home or lawn. Their number is 606-365-7538 and in Danville at 859-236-5289. Don't worry, they're licensed and insured. Plus, with over 35 years of experience, you know it will be done right the first time. Again, their number in Stanford is 606-365-7538 and 859-236-5289 in Danville. Don't wait. Protecting your home and lawn is what they do best at Guardian Exterminating and Bee Green Lawn Care. 12th Region Basketball, presented by Bob Allen Motor Mall. Tim Estes, along with Larry Vaught, Bailey Rucker, and Lilia Smithson is here with us as well. We'll talk with Lilia uh, coming up at halftime of this game. So, Larry, without having seen either one of these teams this year play, I've I've, uh, heard them in passing from time to time on the radio calls and things like that. But do both teams like to get up and run? Well, you said Mercer County likes to to get up and run, but Drakeford will – Will uh, Rock Astor County try to slow them down, or do you think they're going to run together? I, I think they, they both like to play with pace when they have it, but when they don't, they will both pull it out and run a run clock to get what they want. They both have very good offense, set offenses if they need to, but if they get a chance to get out and run, they will get out and run. And, and Drakeford has been a player that has really played her best in the region. When you talked about Macy Blevins earlier, it was three years ago, that over here that uh, Anna, Anna Drakeford played and, and, and Mercer lost to Wayne County. But as a freshman, Drakeford put up 27 against Blevins, which was what I first kind of started focusing in and watching her. And then, of course, she helped Mercer get to the state tournament last year, uh, even when they had Timberland East out hurt and nobody thought they'd really have a chance. And she helped get them there. So she plays really, really well at this tournament usually. And, and she also, the year before, was when she blew her knee out in the regional semifinals, or Mercer might have went to the state tournament that year. Let's go back and take a look at that first game, Larry. If you just joined us, 61-47 as DCA won. We're, we're trying to figure out when the last time a player has scored 40 points in a region game. I don't know. Grayson Bugwa had 40 in that game. Uh, leading the way for Wayne County was... Uh, uh, was Cami DeBoer a senior with seven with 12 points for that? So uh, maybe we have some historians out there listening tonight that would know. Uh, it's been a long time since I know that anybody has scored 40 points in a game for uh, in a regional tournament, I should say. As uh, both teams are getting ready to be introduced now, I don't think we'll do another national anthem. Usually they just do one national anthem. For the game, and uh, we had that earlier today, so we should get right underway with the um, starting lineups. And it's usually uh, Macy Spivey, Taylor Shear, Taylor King, Cameron Cash, and Haven King for Rockcastle County, and for Mercer County, Anna Drakeford, Sarah Dunn, Izzy Carlton, Skylar Webb, and Alexa Wade. Uh, two seniors, a freshman, a junior, and an eighth grader. We'll see how close we are to those uh, starters, Larry. And I want to thank you for joining me joining me tonight. Brad and Dustin will do it tomorrow night. And then we'll be back on Friday night for the semifinal games. We know that DCA is already there. They await the winner of this game. With some great commentary from Bailey Rucker in the first game. We'll talk with Bailey again and also talk with uh, – with Lilia Smithson as well. Here's Rockcastle County starting lineups. Number one, Taylor King, Rockcastle County, County wearing the blue with a red and white stripe on the side. Number two, Macy Spivey gets the start. She's a sophomore. King is a sophomore. A senior, number 10, Cameron Cash. I don't know what it is, Tim, but I've always just liked these Rockcastle uniforms. I just think they look kind of cool. 
Number 11, Taylor Shear is a senior, and she starts for Rockcastle County. And also number 44, Abby DeLeon, a junior. She starts for Rockcastle County. So I just missed one of the players. Number 44 is starting. King, Spivey, Cash, Cheer, and De Leon. Now for the winners of the 46th district. Rockcastle County runners up in the 47th in overtime. They go with number four, Anna Drakeford. Mercer County will be wearing the home white uniforms. Number 14 is Sarah Dunn. Drakeford's a senior, Dunn is a senior. Number 20 is up next, Izzy Carlton. She's a freshman. And a really good freshman, Tim. Just watch her. Next up is number 22, Skylar Webb. She's a junior. And rounding out the starters is an eighth grader, number 24, and that is Alexa Wade. We're live at J.C. Edelman Gymnasium, where there's eight teams and seven games and one champion. On their way to the Sweet 16, they will be crowned on Saturday night. Tim Estes, Larry Vaught, Bailey Rucker, and Lilia Smithson. Everybody ready for the tip in this second game tonight. DCA won the first game 61-45. to Tim, you remember the game you came over to Center College and we watched Bailey play? Yes. That's exactly the kind of thing you're going to see out of Drakeford tonight. On the floor, driving through people, just all over everything, controlling the ball, really a nice player. Ball tipped all the way in the backcourt, going and get it is Spivey. Gives it out front to Shear. Shear drops it back out. Rockcastle County will shoot toward the stage end of the gym here in the first half. Shot on the way, no good Shear. Rebound pulled down by Mercer County. Outlet pass, it goes to Drakeford. Drakeford comes into front court with it. Looks over at Coach Spivey for the play. Goes all the way down in the corner. Gives it over there to Dunn. Back to Drakeford to Dunn. Three-point shot on the way. Good. <laughs> I told you, the best three-point shooter in the game. And possibly a... Uh, could be watching her Center College next year. Taylor Keene comes into front court with it. Brings it back out front. Gives it to Cash. Cameron Cash. Gives it to Shear. Shear puts her dribble down. Stops. And we're going to get a foul away from the ball. And it's going to go on number 20, Izzy Carlton. Wow. That's, I, you can already tell this game's going to be called different in the first game. Because that was just kind of a little bit of a touch and check. They definitely let them play in the first game. They sure, sure did. With the basketball out front is King. Gets it over the right side to Spivey. Spivey, nice spin move. She's defended down there, gives it up to De Leon. Back out now, it comes to Cash. Cash drives in, double teamed. We're going to get a held ball. It's really, going to go to Mercer County. Re- really good play by Wade to come in and double up underneath the basket and get the jump ball. 3-0, Mercer County on top. Six minutes and 44 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Tim Estes and Larry Vaughn along with you from J.C. Edelman Gymnasium, first night of the 12th Region Tournament. Drakeford comes into front court, drops it back out front to Webb. Webb drops it down in low to Carlton, back out. Another three-point shot on the way. Done, no good. Rebound pulled down by King. King goes the other way with it for Rockcastle. Leaves it over on the left side. Three-point shot on the way, and we're tied. Number 10, Cameron Cash. That's, that's Rockcastle's leading three-point shooter, I believe, Chris. Three to three, first tie of the game. Drakeford comes in the front court. Her step back three on the way. Good. I'd say Drakeford can do a little bit of everything. You lay off over, she'll hit that shot. You get out on her, she drives by you. 6-3, Mercer County on top. Spivey passes over on the right, takes it on the right side from King. Now brings it back out, top of the key to Cash. She just hit the three. Now we're on the right side to Spivey. Spivey holds it on her hip. Now she puts a dribble down. Back out to King. Rockcastle County shooting toward the stage end and threw it away. Tried to go down low to Abby DeLeon and could not get it to her. 
Yeah, good pressure on her by Drakeford to make her to kind of throw that pass a little higher. Do it all the way to the stands there. Turnover for Rockcastle County. In the front court comes Drakeford. Gives it over on the left side to Webb. Back out to Drakeford. Drakeford gives it over on the right side to Wade. On the floor, has it knocked away. And coming out there with it is number 20. That's Carlton. And Mercer County resets right on the LC. Drakeford drives in, gets all the way up and under. Shot on the way, bounces out, no good. Rebound pulled down, fought four. Mercer County gets it, throws it out front to Dunn. Inside the three-point line, shot no good. Rebound pulled down this time with authority by Spivey for Rockcastle County. She's got the handles into the front court with it for the Lady Rockets. Step back three on the way, no good for the tie. Rebound pulled down by Mercer County. Drops it back to Drakeford. It's one and done for both teams. Uh, and after that first quick foul, go back to letting them play a little bit now, too, if you like. 4.33 to go here in the first. It's 6-3. to three. Mercer County on top on a set of three-point shots. Down low it goes to Dunn, and she's going to get called for walking. Uh-uh. I, I think it's, it looks like quite a, a matchup zone that Rockcastle County is playing, and they're switching it off pretty well right now and giving Mercer a little bit of trouble with what they're trying to want to do on offense. Four minutes, 15 seconds to go here in the first. It's 6-3, to three, Mercer County. With the basketball, King has it knocked away. Spivey goes and gets it, though. In the backcourt, now she comes across the volleyball strike. Beyond the three-point line extended, she backs it out. Mercer County wearing the home white uniforms. They're the winners of the district, and we're going to get a quick touch foul, and that's going to go against... Skylar Webb, was it? Skylar Webb, I think, picked up number 22. Yep. Skylar Webb picks up a foul. She has one. Carlton has one. Side out right in front of Mercer County's bench for Spivey. Gets it in the backcourt to King. King over on the right side to Cash. Cash gives it back to King. King splits the defenders. Gets up and had it altered, but she get, they get the rebound back. De Leon gets a three-point shot here. Won't go. Gets her own rebound. Yeah. Back up and in. Good. Great hustle of Ashir to follow her shot. And really poor job of blocking out the Mercer County. Well, a shooter knows where the basketball's going, and, and she it, followed it. And it was off from the beginning. We could tell that from here. I saw Bailey shaking her head was like as soon as it went up. Yeah, That was an assist to herself, but she got yeah. it and took it up. A shot blocked on the other end by Spivey. Now with it is King in the front court. Dishes over on the right side. Back out top of the key. Three if it goes. No good. Rebound pulled down. That was shot up by King. And the rebound comes to Drakeford. Drakeford drives in. Dishes over on the left side. Blocked by Shear. And she goes and gets it. Shear comes in the front court with it. She drives. Baseline jumper. No. Won't go. What a finish that would have been. She goes and gets it. Yeah. What an athletic move. To go back and get her missed again. She blocked it. She goes down and puts a shot up. She misses it, but she gives Rockcastle County the lead at 7-6. to six. Shear has four points now for Rockcastle County. Drakeford with it in the front court. Dribbles down, goes all the way up and under. Off-balance shot, won't go. Rebound, pull down. Shot up, no good. That was number 24, Alexa Wade I, on the rebound. I don't know. the there's been a lot of contact when Drakeford goes to the basket. I got a feeling the young lady sitting beside me, that was her, but kind of feel like she ought to be at the Quick foul line. Quick inbounds play. It won't go. Number 20, Izzy Carlton with her first shot, but she's going to go to the line. It would have been an and one, seven to six, two minutes and 29 seconds to go here in the first quarter at Lincoln County High School's J.C. Edelman Gymnasium. At the free throw line, first free throw on the good, Izzy Carlton. And, Tim, she has just got better and better as the season has gone on to where she's almost like a double-double per game for them now, only as a freshman. But I think she's really, really got a bright future. 7-7, and another free throw coming good. As you can tell, she's a really good shooter. Shoots almost 50% from the field. Gets Mercer back on top by one, 8-7. to seven. Inbounds or down in the front court comes King. Dishes over on the left side to Cash. Down low to Shear. Finds her open. Good. Taylor Shear was Talon Shear with six points. 
Shear did a great job of getting separation from Carlton. And they got her the ball, and she finished that. No answer for Shear down low as she has six. She leads Rockcastle County. It's nine to eight. Drakeford with the basketball. Drakeford dribbles around, still dribbling, gets all the way up and under. Shot no good. Rebound Shear for are... Rockcastle County. In the front court, it comes to Spivey. Spivey shot up no good. Rebound pulled down by Mercer County. That's done. Gives it in the front court to Drakeford. Drakeford drives in, spins, gets all the way up and under good. I tell you, Drakeford's just relentless. She'll go in there and you can knock her around. She'll miss. And she's going to come right back at you. Mercer County back out on top, 10 to 9. King with it in the front court for Rockcastle County. Gives it back out front to De Leon. Finds King down low. She hits the deck. And she had a knee to She's knee. Hurt. She's hurt. And man, that hurts big time. Knee to knee. And they're going to get a trainer down there to look at her. Yeah, she's crying and called for somebody to okay, come out gonna, immediately. We're going to step aside. The score is 10-9 to 9 with one minute and one second to go here in the first quarter. 10-9, to 9, Mercer County on top on WPBK-FM 102.9. Home and auto insurance from Kentucky Farm Bureau. They just go together. They go together like coffee and donuts, like zebras and stripes, like low and behold, like flannel shirts and lumberjacks, like heavy rain and leaving your umbrella at home. I do it every time, folks. Save when you bundle your home and auto insurance. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Give Andrew Kaiser a call at 365-3153 or stop by our office at 233 Doe Run Road in Stanford. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. The Urban Group Realtors and Auctioneers. No one sells it better. We're all about bringing buyers your way for any kind of property. We'll get the best price at the end of the day. The Auctioneer and Realtor Pros. UrbanGroup.com. The Urban Group Realtors and Auctioneers. No one sells it better. 12th Region Basketball, presented by Bob Allen Motor Mall. It was Spivey that went down, right, Larry? Yes. Yeah, and it was a, a knee to knee, but she did get up and walk off. Into the game now, number 15, that's Markley Richards. Gets it out front now to De Leon. 10 to 9, Mercer County leads Rockcastle County with the basketball. De Leon with it, top of the key, gives it to Cash. Cash drives in, gives it back out to King. King. Good thing about that is she got up and walked off on her own. That's a good sign. But very, very gingerly. Very, very slowly. With the basketball, Richards throws it away. Drakeford goes down. Shot on the way. Good. Not nice steal and finish. And there's no doubt she was going to the basket. <laughs> she stole that ball. 12 9. Mercer County on top. 30 seconds to go here in the first year. Puts a dribble down. Gets to the rack. Won't go, but she's fouled. Yeah, she, That's she, her game too, Larry. Yeah, Shear, Shear's going to be a really hard matchup for Carlton because Carlton's not quite as physical. And obviously, not. she's a freshman. Shear's a senior and knows how to kind of use a few things to her advantage. And I, I really like her game. Really like it. Shear leads Rockcastle County with 10. And that is what Carlton's second foul, I believe. That it? Seven points. Yep. So makes it 12 to 10. Shear with another one. And in and out, no good. But gets her up, no, uh, King gets the rebound, puts it up, no good, but then Draper comes down. Draper passes over the left side, shot on the way, no good. And that was put up by number 22, Webb. We're going to get a foul on Mercer County. Yeah, I think the oh, foul no was foul. on Rockcastle, I thought. It was on Rockcastle County. Rock, uh, Coach Noble was clapping. Like it was on. I believe it was on Shear for the push on the rebound there. All right, so Shear picks up her first. I think she pushed when the ball went up. We play on. Drakeford gets it, gets baseline, shot up, no good, and she's going to be fouled. She's going to go to the line to shoot two. Foul goes against number 44, De Leon. I don't know how she split three defenders like that, Larry, and got through. Free throw on the way, no good. That's just what she does, Tim. It's 12 to 10. 
Mercer County, it's been back and forth, back and forth. Mercer County's had a three-point lead, missed them both. Drakeford did, rebound pulled down by King. Gives it over to the right side, out to Shear. Seven seconds to go. They want Shear to hold the basketball, goes in, misses it on the bucket. Rebound pulled down by Mercer County, and that's the way a long three-point shot, no good three-quarter shot, 12 to 10. Mercer County leads it after one in the 12th region on WPBKFM 102.9. We all like to save money, and State Farm can help with discounts. When you combine your car insurance with State Farm's homeowner's insurance, you get big savings. So talk to me, Jason Todd, your local State Farm agent, and experience the good neighbor service that has made us America's number one insurance company. Together, we can make sure you get the discount you deserve and coverage you need. No policy with State Farm? No problem. Call me, Jason Todd, at 365-9882 or stop by my office at 711 Danville Avenue in Stanford today to find out how much a multi-line discount can save you. Solar. Solar power from your local Kentucky Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Join the community. CooperativeSolar.com. A message from Intercounty Energy, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. 12th Region Basketball, presented by Bob Allen Motor Mall. Seven points for Shear, three points for Cash for a total of 10. For Rockcastle County, seven points for Drakeford, three points for Dunn, and two points for Carlton for their total of 12, and it's 12 to 10 as we get ready to start the second quarter. Tim Estes and, okay, Izzy, or, uh, Lily is going to come back with us again. She came over to hang out with us. Bailey Rucker is here as well, so we play on Lincoln County High School. Cash or King drives in, shot up, no good. Rebound knocked out of bounds by Mercer County, so it stays with Rock Castle County. Good looking shot that time by King. It just would not go. Three point shot on the way, no good. Rebound pulled down by Rock Castle County. That was number 15, Richards with it. Gets it out front to Shear, back to Richards. Richards gets it back over on the left side now to Cash. Cash to Shear. Shear puts a dribble down, gets all the way, leaves it over. Three-point shot on the way. No good. That was put up by Cash, and the rebound pulled down by Drakeford. Here comes Mercer County's Drakeford. Goes up, and no good. She's going to be fouled on the floor. That's going to go against number one, Taylor King. I've not seen anything back from Macy Spivey, Larry. She went straight into the trainer's room, and she's not been out. Three-point off the out-of-bounds play, no good. That was put up by Dunn. Rebound pulled down by King. King comes down, leaves it out for Shear. It's 12-10, to 10, Mercer County on top. Shear drives down, trying to tie it. She's going to do it from the line if she hits two because she goes in and is fouled. Yeah, yeah they brought her back out to the bench and taped her knee up. But then I don't know, they took her, I don't know if she's back here trying to walk it off or what she's trying to do, but she hasn't been back since then. Shear with seven points, make it eight. She just has a really nice looking shot, doesn't she? Indeed she does, 12 to 11, another free throw coming. Number 23 into the lineup, that's Ella McKinney. She replaces Abby DeLeon. Shear dribbles, sits, shoots, bottom. Give her nine points, and we're tied at 12. 12 to 12, Mercer County and Rockcastle County. Drakeford drives in, gets all the way to the rack, shot up and in, good. Yeah, this, this, this zone is not keeping Drakeford out of, the, out of the paint very well. 14 to 12, Keene comes into front court with it. For Rockcastle County to Richards. Richards to Shear. She sees it. Oh, a nice oh, pass. A nice. Oh, what a she pass, missed. but couldn't finish. King gets her own rebound. What a pass from Shear, though. Two point shot on the way from Richards. No good. Rebound pulled down by Dunn. Alapasa goes to Drakeford. Drives down, has it blocked and fouled. Oh, I don't, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I think there's been a lot of contact on Drakeford's drive, but I'm not sure she got fouled there. 
Number 10, Cameron Cash picks up her second. Her second foul, De Leon set to come back in. Great for free throw, good. We'll talk with Bailey Rucker coming up at halftime tonight. Center College star basketball player. Hails from Boyd County. She sees dead people. We'll talk about that <laughs> every coming week, up later. Every week, yes. <laughs> she's, she's into the, the big time forensics. Second free throw, no good. <laughs> she works with the state coroner's office, actually. 13. Actually, Mercer County leads it 15 to 12 over Rockcastle County. Down low it goes to De Leon to King. King better get out of the lane. Turns around. She says, I'll just take it. Won't fall. Yeah. Rebound pulled down by Mercer County. That's about the third shot King has missed in there. This dead Three-point shot on the way. Misses everything. That was Skylar Webb. Way too strong, but Mercer County gets it. And she steps out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds. Yeah. A 30-second timeout taken by Christy Noble from Rockcastle County. It's 15 to 12, five minutes and 52 seconds to go. And, Larry, this is uh, exactly what you would expect. The first game was tight till the end. DCA pulled away, and this one's close, too. Yeah, this is the one I thought would be close all the way. The first one, I really didn't. I, I, I way underestimated Wayne County. This one, I thought, would be exactly what we are getting. Uh, injury could play a big role in what is going to go on here if Macy Spivey doesn't come back at all. And, and since she's not reappeared after they taped her up, it doesn't, doesn't look good. And then the Mercer's got Carlton out with two fouls, but now Rockcastle's got Cash out with two fouls. So they're down two starters. So this would be a chance. Mercer, if they want to try to get some separation, this will be the time to do it, I would think. Definitely a different call game. We get two different sets of officials. I'm not sure who we traded with this year. The 12th region officials go somewhere, and I'll find out from Brad and Brad to find out where these come from. So we play on. Taylor King with it in the front court for Rockcastle County. Drops it off out there to McKinney. She loses a handle on it, and it's going to be a double dribble. Comes back to Mercer County. This, this, this doesn't look good for Spivey right here. They are taking the tape off of her. Christy Noble's sitting there hugging her with her arm around her. Macy is crying, so that's not a very good sign for what this might mean. Drakeford with it out front. Maybe they're just going to be precautionary with her, not let her come back tonight. Hopefully they can get through to the next game. Shot up, no good. Rebound pulled down by De Leon. De Leon into King. For the front court with it, looks, gives on the right side to Shear, puts her head down, drives, gets the shot up, and it goes wow. everywhere but down. And we're going to get a, a knock out of bounds. How did that not fall for Shear? I do not know. But, but again, that's, that's one thing I, why I like Christy Noble so much. Action's going on out there in the game, regional opener. And she comes out here to take the time to just sit with her player and talk to her and kind of let the assistants just run the game there for a minute. Five minutes in the half, 15 to 12. Mercer County leads it. Done over on the right side for Mercer. Gives it out front now to Webb. Webb gives it to Drakeford. Drakeford holds the fist up. She's right on the LC. Drives in, gets to the rack, shot up, won't go. Wow. Rebound pulled down, De Leon. We're going to get a foul. We think foul on that, Drakeford, I think. I think the officials are from the 13th region, Larry. I think uh, got it. A text in from a good buddy, Mike Kerr, listening to us tonight. Great play-by-play man himself. So we get a foul on Drakeford. That's her first. It's 15-12. to 12. Mercer leads. Rock with the ball. Over on the left side with it is McKinney. That's a plus for Rockcastle right there. See her coming in and making it? Yeah. Ella McKinney off the off the bench. Puts it, makes it 15-14. to 14. She's a sophomore, number 23, 15 to 14. Mercer County, winners of the 46, Rockcastle County, runners up of the 47th. Mercer won by one point. Rockcastle lost by one point. In the front court now with it. Comes Mercer County, gets it down to Drakeford. She's triple teamed, and they're going to get a foul called. Rockcastle County picks up another foul. It's on number 23, Ella McKinney. 
Four minutes and nine seconds to go. It's 15 to 14. In the first half, second quarter, DCA won game one, 61-47. Inbounds play, it comes to Carlton. Back out front, it goes to Drakeford. Drakeford over to the left side. Deep three on the way, no good. And we're going to get a out-of-bounds play. It comes to Rock Castle County. Uh, and the Carlton that, that is in now is Kate Carlton, who is actually the older sister of Izzy Carlton who went out. So we have sisters in this game as well, just like we had two sets in the first game for Wayne County. King gets a screen, top of the key, gives it over to McKinney. McKinney gives it over on the left side down to Richards. Richards drives in, loses it, gets it back to Daly. On up and in, no good. What is wrong with these rims Two. tonight, Tim? Shear had the same thing happen to her. Went all the way down, came back out. Daly on had it. 15 14. We play on. Three minutes, 30 seconds to go in the first half. Mercer County leads it by one in the corner. It goes to Wade. Oh. Wade has it knocked away by Shear. They're going to get a foul on Shear. Uh, that's just a hustle foul. It's hard to. Hard to fault that foul. She knocked the ball loose and went back after it, just ran into the player a little bit. Shear picks up her second foul. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not as good if it's your second foul. The coach probably wouldn't agree it was as good a hustle foul if you got your second one right there. Skylar Webb goes to the line to shoot. Free throw on the way. Good. She's taking some deep threes, Larry. Yes, she has. One of them didn't hit anything. The next one bounced off and almost went in. She hit that free throw, her first point, and the second one no good. 16-14. I I don't think Rockcastle can take Shear out with two starters already, one out injured and one already on the bench. Three minutes, 12 seconds to go in the half. Nice Euro step by Shear, but she loses it. Mercer County's defense is right there. Drake for coming. There's her third one. And that is foul number three. That was a silly, silly foul. But that's a frustration foul, I think, from losing the ball on the other end. And that's a big play right there now. She has nine points. The rest of the team has five. And Shear just picked up her third foul. And Coach Noble is looking at her saying, why? That was on the volleyball line. Yeah, there was no reason for it. Like I said, that's two silly fouls almost in the same spot in, what, 30 seconds there? Drakeford connects on the first one. Another free throw on the way. Got him. She got a 30-second timeout. Let's bring Bailey Rucker in. Bailey, your thoughts so far on the game as Mercer County leads it by a score of 18 to 14. Teams are playing really physical right now. Uh, Rocky, Rock Castle's got to do something to get Anna Drakeford out of the paint. The zone they've got right now isn't doing a lot for them, especially with their foul trouble. Um, they've got to have some people step up uh, with their foul trouble, and Mercer's got to keep tacking the basket. Bailey Rucker, a yeah. junior at Center College, starting point guard for the Lady Colonels. Yeah, M- Mercer is not a good team to have some of your best players in foul trouble because, like I said, Drakeford is just relentless going to the basket. And, if she, and unless you get her in foul trouble, she's just going to keep coming in there. Maybe either she's going to score or she's going to challenge you so much that there's going to be some contact and you don't know what, whether you're going to get the call or not. Largest lead of the night for either team is right now at 4, 18 to 14. Wayne County actually led DCA in the first half, 26-25 at halftime. The DCA came back to win it. Oh, tried to give... That's the old you zig, I'll zag, and they forgot to zig and zag, Larry. Yeah, this is a pretty critical time for Rock Castle right here. They need to find a way to, I, I would think, probably slow the pace down, try to get to halftime in no worse shape than they are now, but that's going to be hard to do. Two leading scores on the bench, one with fouls, one with an injury. Out front with it is Webb, and had it knocked away by DeLeon, right to King, turnover. Rock Castle County gets it going the other way. Nice spin move up and won't go. The rims have got lids on them in this hat, in this quarter. A shot block over to DeLeon, out to King. We've seen so many baskets not yeah. fall for Rock Castle County here in this first, in the second quarter. Well, for Mercer, too. I mean, Drakeford had yeah. two or three in there. And it was the same way last game. I don't know what y'all done to the rims over here, Tim. DeLeon passes down, shot up, no good. That was put up down there by Cash. Rebound pulled down by Drakeford. Yeah. Two yeah. minutes, ten seconds to go now in the first half. 
if, if, if I'm Mercer, I, w- I want Drakeford to get the ball or else kick it out the Dunn here for a shot. To Drakeford, she gets a screen, goes all the way up and under. Shot no good, rebound done. Three-point shot on the way, Wade in and out, no good. Drakeford fights for the rebound, and she double dribbled. I don't know. I, I don't think Bailey and I would have called that double dribble. Did you think she did or just? I thought that it was hit off of a Rock Castle County That's player. what I thought, too, that they knocked it loose and she got it back again. But. We play on one minute and 45 seconds to go in the second game of the first night of the 12th Region Tournament from J.C. Edelman Gymnasium. Out front, McKinney with it for Rock Castle. The lefty three-pointer, no good. Rebound, boxed out, pulled down. And that foul is going to be in the in the back court. Just a, I, I must be driving uh, Christy Noble crazy to foul 80 feet away from the basket. And I believe that's two fouls on McKinney. It is. It is, yeah. Two on McKinney, two on Cash, three on Shear. And going to the line will be number 22, Skylar Webb. She's one out of two from the Knights. And McKinney came off the bench, right? Yes. Free throw, got it. And there I guess Christy felt like Christy Noble felt like she had no choice but to put cash back in when she did. But if she happened to get another foul right now. 19-14, second free throw, no good. Hit one, miss one. That's her MO for the night. Hit one, miss one. King with the basketball. Took it down now to 124 to go in the first half. On the right side of Richards. Back out to King. Rock Hassel with the ball. Mercer with a five-point lead. Right there, wasn't it? We're going to call it good yeah, okay. and the foul. I thought she took a little stutter play. step there. but Taylor King with her first bucket and one. I think Haley Spivey and I are thinking alike on that little. But Rock Hassel has a big shot that they really, really needed. Yes, they've not scored for quite a while. Free no. throw good. The and one. The last points they had was Shears, two free throws. That cuts it to two, 19-17. One minute and ten seconds to go. Drakeford now with the basketball for the Lady Titans. Rockets on defense. Passes over on the right side to Dunn. Dunn back out to Drakeford. Exactly one minute to go in the half. It goes over to Wade. And they're going to say she walked. I think she stepped out of bounds, or did she walk? Oh, that was Bailey? Webb. She walked, okay. Skylar okay. Webb. Yeah, I was going to say, if Rock Castle could get out of here no, down no more than five, I would think they would be delighted. Now they've got a chance to have the game. Yeah, they can hold the last shot. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be in any rush right here. I, I guarantee if it was Jeff Jackson, it would be one shot purple, one shot Duke, one shot something. Yeah. Under, Mer- anything under a minute and a half, he holds. And Mercer's in the zone, which should make it easier to hold the ball if you want to. King out front with it, gives it to Richards. I just got to have some patience here if you're right. Well, King drives in, gives it over, wide open three for McKinney. No! Won't go, but Richards gets the rebound. Gets it into King. Out to De Leon. Shot up. Good! That's what I said. Attack the basket. Go ahead and score. <laughs> 19-19. Now Mercer has it for the last shot. Mercer County trailed by five. They're on a 5-0 run right now. Making it 19-19. Drakeford with a basketball. Gets a screen. Drives in. Knocked to the ground. And oh. she walks. We're going to need to get an explanation for Bailey at halftime. That either had to be a contact foul on the defense, a charge, or I, I don't see how you could call a walk there. With that and kind they're of just going to hold it and let the clock run out. And yeah. that ends the first half. And the score is 19 to 19. Lincoln, we're at Lincoln County's J.C. Edelman Gymnasium, Mercer County, and Rock Castle County, tied at 19. 12th Region basketball action on WPBK FM 102.9. From the classroom to the hardwood, Lincoln County Schools is a proud public school district made up of seven different schools and a technology center. From preschool to patriot, we cherish the opportunity to provide a quality education to all of our students. Lincoln County is not only a great place to learn, but is also a great place to work. We offer many exciting career opportunities. You can help make a positive impact on your community here at Team Lincoln. For more information about our schools, please visit lincoln.kyschools.us or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 
Are you looking for an ag loan, perhaps to buy farmland, farm machinery, or livestock? My name is Stanley Burris, loan officer with PBK Bank. If you're looking for an ag lender and want to be part of a great community, I am here to help. Most of my fellow loan officers at PBK Bank also have experience in ag lending, and some raise cattle as I do. We understand the risks and rewards of farming. We will make every effort to find you the right loan and guide you through the entire process. There is no better place to raise a family than on a Kentucky farm. Stop by and see me, Stanley Burris, at the Houston Mill office of PBK Bank. NMLS number 668032, member FDIC, and an equal housing lender. So many animals in Stanford need a loving home. Contact Lincoln County Humane Society about adopting an animal that they shelter or foster. Caring for your companion can provide a sense of fulfillment and improve well-being. Not only that, but there simply aren't enough homes for every animal born each year, and you can help with that. The Lincoln County Animal Shelter is here to walk you through the adoption process. To you, a pet is a part of your life. To your pet, you're their whole life. The Lincoln County Animal Shelter. This is Dr. Shay Lair. For 40 years, I've taken care of not only Lincoln, but surrounding counties' dental needs. For the first time in those 40 years, we are welcoming a new dentist to the practice, and therefore, we are going through a name change to Lincoln Smiles. I'd like to introduce to you Lincoln County's newest professional. My name is Dr. Andrew Cooper, and as a Stanford boy born and raised, I'm happy to be serving the people of my hometown. Conveniently located at 603 Lancaster Street, across from Derm's Grocery here in Stanford, we're now on Facebook, so be sure to go like us at Lincoln Smiles to stay up to date on all the exciting things while so many of us ask big questions about what happens when we die we often forget to ask questions that will capture the way that we lived take time to think about the type of funeral services that you would want traditional celebratory will the service reflect your unique interests and personality contact mcknight funeral home and monument company and let funeral directors kyle mcknight and jamie oaks assist you in pre-planning your funeral service today mcknight funeral home and monument company family owned and committed to serving you with dignity. 12th Region Basketball, presented by Bob Allen Motor Mall. 19 to 19 at the half. Mercer County and Rockcastle County all tied up. Here's how the scoring went. 12 points for Anna Drakeford for Mercer County. Three points for Sarah Dunn. Two points for Izzy Carlton. And two points for Skylar Webb. Leading the way for Rockcastle County. Taylor Shear with nine points, three points for King, three uh, Taylor King, three points for Cameron Cash, two points for Abby DeLeon, and two points for Ella McKinney. And let's get the thoughts of Bailey Rucker in this first half. Your thoughts on the game, Bailey, as we're tied at 19 at the half. Again, these two teams are just playing super physical. Rockcastle's been in some foul trouble because of it. Uh, but Mercer's got to keep attacking the basket and keep loading the paint on the defensive end because Rockcastle can't really do anything about it, and they're not too tempted to shoot the threes right now. Larry, talk about that play that you that right there at the end of where Draper drove in and ran into Daly on and hit the deck, and you and Bailey talked about it. Uh, it was actually called a walk. Uh, it could have been an offensive foul, a defensive foul, but they, and instead of the block charge, it was block charge walk. Yeah, I don't quite get it because we didn't think she walked either because she kept her dribble even as she went down. But when you're when she's going full speed, it's a defender full speed and bounces off. I don't know. It's I, I, how should they call the walk? I don't know. But again, Drakeford takes a lot of contact, goes in there in the games and takes that, and they've not called a whole lot of that tonight like what they did in the district when they played and as I said she went to foul line 22 times but it's, it's been not quite the kind of game I expected I thought it'd be a little bit more of a scoring type game but both teams between foul, foul trouble and then Rockcastle also getting one of their top players hurt so they are Rockcastle's in a little bit of a bind when you got Shear with three fouls one player out hurt and another one of your best players with two fouls already and knowing that Drake it's the rim like she does so I don't know what kind of adjustments Christy Noble will make. We'll see. Hey, Bailey, let me ask you this, this question. Bailey Rucker along with us from Center College tonight. Um, you've been in games before. Unfortunately, you've been injured and had to come out before. You've had teammates been injured and come out before. Your leading scorer goes down. Does everyone kind of pull together in the old saying, win one for the Gipper kind of deal here at halftime? I think so. Sometimes that just gives you an extra motivation to go out and win, and you want to do it all for her. Larry, as we enter, as we get ready for the second half, we'll talk more about it when we come back. We've got a tie game at halftime, 19-19. to 19. DCA won the first game 
61-47. You're listening to 12th Region Basketball Action on WPBK-FM 102.9. Hungry for lunch? Looking for something different? Something fast? Stop by Coleman's Drugstore in Delhi. Coleman's is more than a drugstore. It's the perfect meeting place for those of us who want lunch at a snap. Coleman's has different lunch specials daily. They're serving up hot, home-cooked southern dishes to sandwiches and wraps. And oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention my very favorite part of their menu. Homemade desserts. Mmm. What are you waiting on? Coleman's is located right in the heart of downtown Stanford. Your local hometown drugstore in Delhi. Cornerstone Realty and Auction in Lancaster will make your dreams come true. Broker and owner Dionica Asbury and her team are ready to help you reach the real estate finish line. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or selling your existing home, navigating real estate can be tough. Let Cornerstone Realty and Auction make it easy. Specializing in Garrett, Lincoln, and surrounding counties, they're your local real estate experts. Cornerstone Realty and Auction, 859-329-8193. Since 1957, Durham's Grocery at 606 Lancaster Street in Sanford has been serving Stanford and the surrounding community with a full line of groceries, fresh meats, quality produce, and a full-service deli with homemade salads. They offer money orders and are also a payment center for KU, Atmos Energy, AT&T, and more. For fast, friendly service all the way to your car, Durham's Grocery is big enough to accommodate, small enough to appreciate. That's Durham's Grocery. During the good times in life, such as a promotion or the birth of a new baby, who do you call to share in your excitement? You call a friend. During the difficult times in life, such as the loss of a loved one, who do you call for support and comfort? You call a friend. John David and Mary Benton Friend, your friends in funeral service. We also offer a full line of monument products. Contact us anytime, 365-2670 or 379 379- 2011. Guardian Exterminating and Bee Green Lawn Care, your total weed and pest control experts, offer many services like seeding and fertilizing and termite and pest control. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Call them today for an inspection of your home or lawn. Their number is 606-365-7538 and in Danville at 859-236-5289. Don't worry, they're licensed and insured. Plus, with over 35 years of experience, you know it will be done right the first time. Again, their number in Stanford is 606-365-7538 and 859-236-5289 in Danville. Don't wait. Protecting your home and lawn is what they do best at Guardian Exterminating and Be Green Lawn Care. 12th Region Basketball, presented by Bob Allen Motor Mall. Tim Estes, Larry Vaughn, and Bailey Rucker from Center College out of Boyd County High School. And Bailey, uh, did you guys ever make it to the uh, 12th, uh, to the, uh, what's that, the 15th region? The 15th, the 15th region there? 16th. 16th. 16th region. How far did you guys ever make it when you were in high school? Uh, my freshman year, we went to the Final Four at State. Um, and then the next two years, we got upset in the first round. And then my senior year, we unfortunately didn't make it out of region. We got upset. So the, the first game is so tense and so tight. I mean, do you kind of get through that first game? You're like, okay, we won. Let's move on to the next one and take care of business. It's tied at halftime here. Yeah, rule number one, you can't overlook uh, anybody. you got to come in fighting every game. And sometimes first game, first game jitters, you got to get them out of the way and just play the rest of the way through. The schools were offered the opportunity to sell some ads. We'd like to thank these uh, sponsors for making it possible tonight. Citizens Bank, check out their website, citizensbankrb.com. Army National Guard, good luck to all the student athletes. Stuart Powell, Ford, Mazda, we make it easy. 859-236-8917. Himes Body Shop, located at 53 Stamford Street in Lancaster. Thompson's Pharmacy, Give them a call at 859-734-3004 in Harrodsburg and Sailor's Concrete. Call Joe Sailor for commercial or residential, 859-302-0252. You're listening to WPBK-FM 102.9, Crab Orchard, Stanford. We are bringing you the action from Lincoln County High School's J.C. Edelman Gymnasium. And now we've got a question at the books, Larry. Are they questioning the throw-in to see who gets the basketball first? I don't know. They're at the, with the, your, your official score, the backup official, and one of the lead. Both teams seem pretty certain it's Mercer County's ball to start the 
half, so I don't know what's going on. 19 to 19. But at least it's no video review like they have in college where <laughs> you sit there forever. All right, so here we go. Mercer County with the or yeah, Mercer County with the basketball wearing the white. They will go toward the stage end of the gym. Out front it comes to Wade over three point shot. Like the game started Boom. and it starts again. You, you cannot leave her open. If she's open, she's gonna knock it down. Sarah Dunn with her second three pointer makes it twenty two to nineteen. Here comes Rockcastle County with her first time in the second half. Down low it goes to Shear. Shear up and under, won't go. Rebound pulled down by Mercer County. They lead it. Drakeford very quickly to the other end. Gets down. Shot up and in good. Within three seconds, her getting that ball off the board. She'd already put it in the other basket. 24-19. Here comes the Rockcastle County's Richards. Richards gives it out to De Leon. De Leon. Mercer County wearing the home white uniforms. Rockcastle wearing the blue over to Shear. Shear backs her man down, up and in good. That was really a nice move Shear made the first time. It just missed the left-handed shot. 24-21, three-point shot on the other end. No good. Rebound pulled down by King. That shot up was by Webb. Out front now comes the Shear. It's 24-21, Mercer County on top. Rockcastle County with a basketball, a three to tie and a two to cut it to one. With a basketball, it's number 10, Cash. Yeah, that's just an inexperienced foul right there by Carlton. You reach over like that, you're going to get a foul just about every time. Foul goes against Izzy Carlton, the freshman. That's her third. You're right. So now her and Shear both have three, and they're guarding each other. Carlton's only scored two points tonight. Inbounds play. It comes to Cash. Cash waits for King to take it. She does. Gets it into De Leon. De Leon double team. Taken away by Dunn. We're going to get a held ball. And it stays with Rockcastle County. Yeah, good quick hands by Dunn there. I think De, De Leon was looking to throw to Shear and she wasn't open. And next thing you know, Dunn had hold of the ball. Brad Smith and Dustin Oney will be here to call the games tomorrow night for you. And I guarantee you, Dustin will have better stats than me. <laughs> King with the basketball out front. I don't know how he does all those stats. Now, give and go to King from Shear. Shot up, no good. Rebound pulled down Drakeford. Had a nice give and go. Drakeford going all the way over. Has it slapped away. Taken him out down low by number 20, Carlton, and had it blocked, and De Leon takes it out. Yeah. Destin won't have Bailey Rucker analysis on Tim, so that <laughs> makes up for your... 24-21. Three-point shot for the tie. Good. That's cash. Cameron Cash. Ties the game at 24. 24-24. Right where we ended the, the second quarter. It's tied at 24. Both teams have scored five. Cross-court pass. It goes to Dunn. Dunn tries to throw it in low and is taken away. And a foul. The foul's going to go against, I believe, number 24, Alexa Wade. Yes. Yeah, Wade picks up the foul. I keep thinking that Rockcastle is just going to sag inside, except off on Dunn, make sure this down, and just not let Drakeford have a chance to get in there. 24-24. Tied again for the third time tonight. Cash gives it up to Shear. Back out to King. King has it knocked away and stripped away. Drakeford gets it. Drakeford goes all the way to the other end. Shear can't do anything about it with her three fouls. Drakeford took it right to her. Yes, that's what Drakeford does. She knew she had sheer. She was going. 26-24. Still had hit a pretty difficult shot. She must have arched that up there 14 feet high. Four minutes, 50 seconds to go here in the third quarter. King leaves it off over on the right side to Cash. Cash drives all the way up and under. Good. Cameron Cash. That's really the best drive to the basket that Rockcastle's had out of anybody except for Shear. 26-26 tie. DCA won the first game, 61-47. They await the winner of this game on Friday night at 6.30. Drakeford with the basketball. Dribbling pulls it out. We're tied for the fourth time tonight. 26-26. Drakeford deep three on the way. Money. Wow. 
<laughs> That's why I love watching Anna Drakeford play. You're sitting here thinking, you've got to find a way to keep her from getting inside, so she just hits a, what, 24-footer there? That was deep, 26-29. Inbound, or down low it comes. Sheer breaks open up and in good from DeLeon. Sheer with the finish from DeLeon makes it 29-28. Deep three on the way. No good this time from Dunn. Rockcastle was lucky there. I don't know why they didn't close out on her better than give her that look. All right, Rockcastle can take the lead. Three minutes and 38 seconds to go here in the third. King wanted the two-pointer. Now she doesn't give it up to DeLeon to Shear. Shear back out to King. King step back three on the way. No good. Tapped around, and Rockcastle County gets it. That was a hot potato. In from shot from McKinney, or that was King, and the rebound pulled down this time by Mercer County. 29-28. Cross court pass it goes. Open for the three on the way. In and out, no good. That was Webb. She's had some looks at it tonight. Yeah, great pass from Drake for cross court. Three minutes exactly to go in the game. King. Third cross, quarter. Third, third, third quarter. quarter. Third quarter. <laughs> Settle yeah, down. In yeah. this third. In this third quarter. <laughs> okay. King passes over on the left side to Richards. Richards dribbles it off of her foot but goes and gets it, and she's going to be taken to the ground. Yeah, it's going to be. A, again, if you're a coach, I think it's kind of foul you can live with there. She was just hustling, trying to get the ball on that loose ball. That's a hustle foul. I believe it's going to go against Wade. Wade, yeah. Just, That's her second. Just hit her in the back. and Inbounds play coming from Rockcastle to De Leon. De Leon looking, gets it out now to Richards. Richards has it knocked away, goes and gets it, gives it out to Shear. Shear leads Rockcastle County tonight, drives in, little floater, good. She is so smooth with what she does there. And Carlton not going to foul her. Did about all she could on defense there, but just a nice baseline jumper. And don't look now, but Rockcastle County's reclaimed the lead at 30 to 29. With two minutes and 19 seconds to go. Drakeford, another deep three on the way. No, this one's short. Rebound pulled down by De Leon. Leaves it back for King. Exactly two minutes to go here in the third quarter. It's 30 to 29. Rockcastle County leads it. And we're going to get a foul away from the is basketball. That on cash? That's a big one if it is. A double foul. Well, they, they, Bailey, this is like a double foul? Yep, double foul. All right, so when the hands go out like that, like a full timeout, it's a double foul on that. Well, that so number that, 10 uh, for, she picks up her third, Larry, and number two for... Um, 22. 22. They've got it up on the board wrong. That's that, low this year. that was actually a good play for, for Mercer because you get uh, cash with her third. And Mercer didn't really get hurt that much. And Carlton just picks up her fourth. Fourth, yeah. She just she just can't handle Shearer one on one. Shearer goes to the line to put Rock on top even more. Thirty to twenty nine. She's got two free throws coming. Free throw on the way. That Bottom. Was, that was on Carlton, wasn't it? Now they they called it on Wade. Based on what the scoreboard shows, but oh, I thought it was on 20. All right, 31 29. Coming back into the game is number 23, Ella McKinney. Richards goes to the bench. Shear waits, gets it, dribbles it once, spins it, shoots it, makes it. I like the way the Shear just never seems rattled, always very poised, just keeps playing. 32-29. She gives them the largest lead of the night for Mercer uh, for Rockcastle County at three. Mercer County's led by as many as five. They, out front it comes to Mercer County's driving in. Shot on the way. No good. That was Webb and the rebound pulled down by Rockcastle County. They lead it 32-29. One minute and 28 seconds to go. The winner moves on to take on DCA. Here goes Shear. Stop. Pop. Good. Uh. She's going to, I think, what, Campbellsville? It's going to be, I think, will be a great player there at Campbellsville. 34-29, the largest lead for Rockcastle County now. Ten points in this quarter alone for Shears. She has 19 overall. 
Draper drives in, gets all the way, passes it out. Three-point shot on the way, money for Skyler Webb. What, what a drive and assist for Anna Drakeford there. I don't know how you see all the way back out front. Like I guess that's why we set up here, Tim. And they do what they do, but what an assist. A full timeout taken by Mercer County with 53.1 seconds to go. Let's do a game recap real quick. 12 to 10, Mercer County led after the first quarter. It was 19 to 19 at the half. It's now 34 to 32. 30. It's 32, right? 34, yeah, that 32. Was a, yeah, that was a three-pointer. 34, 32. Three-pointer. The winner moves on to take on DCA. If you missed that first game, Grace and Bugua had 40 points for the Lady At, at least 40, right? At least, <laughs> yeah. I may have missed a couple. It's uh, Mercer County and Rockcastle County, a good one going on right here. Rockcastle County is led by as many as five. Mercer County's led by as many as five. Yeah, there's no, there's no back down on either side here. Rockcastle's defense has been better this quarter than what it was in the first half, and, and Mercer is just having trouble stopping Shear. She just incredible going to the basket. Shear brings it up across the time strike. 48 seconds to go in the third quarter. Gives over on the right side. Give and go to Shear. Drives down low. Shot up and in good. Definitely feeling it tonight. 36-32. That's an offensive foul, maybe. Foul's going to go against Mercer County. Or Rockcastle County's number 23, Ella McKinney. Now, now I thought Draper used her left hand or an arm and shoved off that time myself. But So that's number three on Ella McKinney. With 32 seconds to go, it's a four-point lead in the third quarter. 36-32, Drakeford dribbling. Gives her over to the left side to Webb. Webb back to Drakeford. Drakeford way out beyond the three-point line. 14 seconds to go. Drakeford drives in, gets to the rack up and in. Good. It's been the Drakeford and Shear show in this game. 36-34. Down low it goes, shot up King, no good. And that's the way the third quarter ends. Rockcastle leads it 36-34. You're listening to 12th Region Basketball Action on WPBK-FM 102.9. The Urban Group Realtors and Auctioneers. No one sells it better. We're all about bringing buyers your way for any kind of property. We'll get the best price. Urbangroup.com The Urban Group Realtors and Auctioneers No one sells it better Oh, the sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home Cooperative Solar Solar power from your local Kentucky Touchstone Energy Cooperative Join the community. CooperativeSolar.com. A message from Intercounty Energy, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. 12th Region Basketball, presented by Bob Allen Motor Mall. One quarter left to play in regulation, I should say. Shear has 21 points for Rockcastle County. Drakeford has 21 points for. Mercer County. It's 36-34. We're starting the second quarter, starting the fourth quarter here of the second game. DCA won the first game. Drakeford comes in the front court with it, goes down low to Dunn, back out front it goes, cross court in the corner goes. Now down to Dunn, trying to go deep, shot up and in good, we're tied. Nice job of Sarah Dunn there, being patient. Threw it back out the first time, got it back, and got the right basket. 36-36. Seventh tie of the game. Three-point shot on the way from McKinney. No good. Rebound pulled down by Mercer County's Webb. Webb comes into front court, gives it to Dunn. We're tied, 36-36. 
I don't know about that three from McKinney. I think she's only made seven all season. Drakeford now with it. Working against McKinney. Drops it down in low to Dunn. Has it knocked away by King. She takes it out of the air. Goes down. Shot on the way. No good. Won't go. Goes out of bounds. And it's going to stay with Rockcastle County. That was really good hustle by Drakeford to get back and then maybe take the charge. They didn't call it. Then also really good hustle by Shear to get back and knock that ball away from Carlton and save it for Rockcastle. Mercer County's going down low. They're trying to get Shear on her fourth foul. They've not been able to do it. She's got 21, and Drakeford's got 21. To King, cross-court pass, it goes to Cash. Cash drives in, little floater on the way, in and out, no good, gets her own rebound. Back up and in good for Cameron Cash. Makes it 38-36. Going to get a no Uh call on the other end, and Drakeford is still down Uh on the other end. She gets up, we play on, and we're going to get a foul. So there was a hard collision on the other end, Larry. I don't know how that was not Shear's fourth foul. Maybe maybe Bailey can explain that to us, but that, that looked like her fourth foul to me with the way they collided. And now Shear is, is hobbled as well. A full timeout taken. We step aside. It's 38-36. Rockcastle County leads it with 6.34 to go in the game on WPBKFM 102.9. So many animals in Stanford need a loving home. Contact Lincoln County Humane Society about adopting an animal that they shelter or foster. Caring for your companion can provide a sense of fulfillment and improve well-being. Not only that, but there simply aren't enough homes for every animal born each year, and you can help with that. The Lincoln County Animal Shelter is here to walk you through the adoption process. To you, a pet is a part of your life. To your pet, you're their whole life. The Lincoln County Animal Shelter. This is Dr. Shea Lair. For 40 years, I've taken care of not only Lincoln, but surrounding counties' dental needs. For the first time in those 40 years, we are welcoming a new dentist to the practice, and therefore, we are going through a name change to Lincoln Smiles. I'd like to introduce to you Lincoln County's newest professional. My name is Dr. Andrew Cooper, and as a Stanford boy born and raised, I'm happy to be serving the people of my hometown. Conveniently located at 603 Lancaster Street, across from Derm's Grocery here in Stanford. We're now on Facebook, so be sure to go like us at Lincoln Smiles to stay up to date on all the exciting things to Wolf come. Region Basketball, presented by Bob Allen Motor Mall. Jim Estes, Larry Vaughn, and Bailey Rucker from J.C. Edelman Gymnasium. Also a shout out to Lilia Smithson who came over. Lilia's going to come back on Friday night with us as well. It's 38-36. Rockcastle leads it. They've got the basketball into De Leon. No good. King with the finish up and in good. That makes it 40 to 36 with six minutes 24 seconds to go Drakeford with the basketball out front for Mercer County drives in goes down slapped away and there's going to be a foul and I believe it's going to go on De Leon yep De Leon picks up another foul six minutes and 16 seconds to go in regulation it's 40 to 36. Inbounds play. It comes to Drake for her shot up. No good. She's fouled. She'll go to the line to shoot two. How many free throws has she shot tonight, Tim? One, two, three, four, five, six. She's three out of six. She normally averages going about eight or nine times a game to the foul line, so she's going to be right on her average here now. She's got two coming here. Free throw on the way. Good. 40 to 37, Rockcastle County lost their district championship in overtime by one. Mercer County won their district championship by one. Second free throw, no good. Shear with the rebound. Oh, Drakeford's down again. I don't know what happened there. Shear is down on the other end. No, it's Drakeford down. Oh, Drakeford down. I'm sorry. Shear came down this end, and King puts it up and in. Good. That, that doesn't look good. I don't know what she heard while ago, but apparently it's the same. Is it a knee, Bailey, you think? Or? Not sure. I think she went up for that rebound and kind of got uh, punched in the stomach, so I'm not sure if that's what she's holding or if she okay. came down on an ankle or something. But right. it looks like her stomach again. So okay. King came down and finished off the bucket, making it 42 to 37. Shear missed the – or I'm sorry, Drakeford Three. missed the free throw and went after the rebound and was hit in the stomach, and now we play on. Drakeford's good to go. 
Drakeford comes down into front court. Gets it back out front. Deep three on the way. No good. No, no. Carlton's just not been on tonight, Larry. That, that's not her shot out there, Tim. That's not quite what she does. That was a little forced three there. Rockcastle County can distance themselves a little bit more. They're up five. It's the largest lead by any team tonight. Both teams has led, have led by five. Sear dribbling. Goes all the way up and under. Shot on the way. No good. And she just picked up foul number four. Oh, wow. They're going to call a charge on Shear. And with five minutes and 31 seconds to go with Rockcastle County leading 42-37, to Shear's going to have to go to the bench. That was a huge play because there had been a block that was going to be on Carlton. That would have been her four. Instead, you get the foul on Shear. 21 points for Shear, 21 points for Drakeford. With the basketball out front with it is Webb. Deep three, short, no good. Larry, they have the green light to shoot those three-pointers, I guess. Yeah, Haley, Haley lets them shoot, but I think still sometimes you've got to know there's a reason you're standing out there wide open, and, and that's because they don't think you can make the shot. Richards came back into the game for Shear. She went to the bench with at five minutes and 31 seconds to go. It's five minutes and 12 seconds now. 42-37, Rockcastle County leading. King with a basketball. Dribbling out front, they're up five. No foul called there. Going all the way in, picks their dribble up. Has to get, get a timeout. A 30-second timeout, keeping it right here. <laughs> Intensity, Larry. <laughs> Intensity. <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh... I, I, there's a little bit of a bump there. I, I can see if you're sitting over in the Rock Castle section. If I'd been my son playing, I'd have been yelling bump too. <laughs> if I'd been Bailey, I'd have been yelling bump. But they've let them go a lot. That's why I think sometimes it's hard for these players to know what to expect because one time something's a foul and the next time it's not. But that was a good timeout by Christy Noble. They're getting ready to have the t- hell ball and turn it over. Five second count and turn it over right there. But. 12 to 10 after one quarter, 19 to 19 at the half. Mercer led the first quarter. Rock led the third quarter, 36-34. It's now 42-37. Four minutes and 52 seconds to go here in. To go. Out front now with it for Rockcastle County. Is Cash. Cash gives it over to Richards. Four minutes to go in the game, 44-40. Mercer County leads it. And we're going to get a foul, and that's going to go against Dunn. Hey, you better be careful when you go to swinging those elbows, though. I don't know. I, I thought maybe they're... Inbounds play. They are defending 12th region champions. Inbounds play comes all the way down to Richards. Off of the head of Webb. Oh. And they're going to say she walked. Good pressure by Webb there. Drug or pivot foot, I guess, is what the call was. There's no way in the world I would be a high school basketball official. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You, you know, Baylor used to be an official. I know. She's told us that before. Drakeford with it. Mercer trails 44-40. Drakeford drives all the way in. Shot up and in good. 44-42. It's a two-point game with three minutes and 32 seconds to go. King comes in the front court with it for Rockcastle County. She has a smile on her face because she knows she was out dribbling everybody coming down. And now she's going to there's going to be a foul called. They, they didn't call it at first. I think Christy Noble gets credit. The coach gets credit for calling that foul. That foul goes against Mercer County's right for her second. <laughs> but isn't it amazing the way big players step up at big time? Rockcastle got out by seven. And Drakeford hits a three, then drives and hits another shot. I was getting ready to say, when do you bring Shear back in? And you just did. She's oh, wide wow. open. How do you abandon her and three feet from the basket? And puts it up and in good for big her 23rd mis- port. They bring mis- her in and she scores, Larry. Big mistake from the Mercer defense right there. Had her covered, then both both defenders just left her. Drakeford drives in, gets to the rack, shot up and in good. 46-44. It's, it's almost like Rockcastle's scared to foul her now on bumper again. If you let her have that path to the basket, she's going to finish. Two minutes, 50 seconds to go in regulation. 
King with the basketball out front. Gives it up to Shear. Shear to the crossover. Gets down low. And that is a touch foul. Yeah. There's been much harder fouls tonight. Oh, my gosh. Not called, and that one was a touch. Yeah, I've bumped you and Bailey harder than that. <laughs> wow, that was a touch as being generous even calling it that. Okay, full timeout taken, 46-44. Two minutes, 42 seconds to go. Rock up by two. You're listening to 12th Region Basketball Action on WPBK-FM 102.9. Hungry for lunch? Looking for something different? Something fast? Stop by Coleman's Drugstore in Delhi. Coleman's is more than a drugstore. It's the perfect meeting place for those of us who want lunch at a snap. Coleman's has different lunch specials daily. They're serving up hot, home-cooked southern dishes to sandwiches and wraps. And oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention my very favorite part of their menu. Homemade desserts. Mmm. What are you waiting on? Coleman's is located right in the heart of downtown Stanford. Your local hometown drugstore in Delhi. Since 1957, Durham's Grocery at 606 Lancaster Street in Sanford has been serving Stanford and the surrounding community with a full line of groceries, fresh meats, quality produce, and a full-service deli with homemade salads. They offer money orders and are also a payment center for KU, Atmos Energy, AT&T, and more. For fast, friendly service all the way to your car, Durham's Grocery is big enough to accommodate, small enough to appreciate. That's Durham's Grocery. 12th Region Basketball, presented by Bob Allen Motor Mall. 46-44, Rockcastle County leads. Two minutes and 42 seconds to go. Tim Estes, Larry Vaughn, and Bailey Rucker on with you from J.C. Edelman Gymnasium. Rockcastle County has the basketball, and they turned it over on a five-second call. What a great defense by Mercer right there. Great defense. So Mercer County can tie with a two, take a lead with a three, 46-44. Rockcastle County has led since it was 30-29 to back in the third quarter. Drakeford for the tie, up and in good. Was that Drakeford? Yes, yeah. who else? Drakeford up and in good. We're tied again, 46-46, 220 to go. That's nine straight points for Drakeford. Here, she's out doing everything for Rock, gives it up to King. And one! Oh, my goodness. She, oh, I don't know. <laughs> no. She gets it, Larry. The and one coming for Taylor King. That was the NBA continuation play right there. What do you there. think about that, that Bailey Rucker? continuation Rucker's? right there. I don't, that's definitely on the floor. Do I mean, they have that in college? No. No. <laughs> I mean, she was bumped, what, 10 feet from the basket? Yeah, and they have at the free throw line. They have it tonight here at J.C. Edelman Gymnasium. Free throw no good. 48 to 46. Two minutes to go in the ball game. Drayford with the basketball out front gets a round shot on the way, and they're going to get a call. It's going to be a a foul on. Oh, I thought they might have been going to call an illegal screen when she moved over two. there. But the, call, call the foul on King, right? Yeah, got the foul on Taylor King. That's her her third. Here we go, Drakeford with the basketball, under two minutes to play. It's a two-point game, 48-46. Drakeford drives in, gets all the way to the rack, and turned away by DeLeon. King comes out of there with it for Rockcastle County, drives all the way under, brings it back out. Mercer fans wanted to walk, no call, gets it out to Shear. One minute, 30, 33 seconds to go now. Shear drives in, gets it over to Richards. Out front, it's like Rockcastle County's waiting for that foul to be called. They're gonna they're gonna burn some time here if they can get it to Shear. One minute, 29 seconds. They're up by two, 48-46. DCA won the first game, 61-47. They await the winner. Shear dribbling right on the red, white, and blue LC. Now she comes in, gives it over on the right side to Cash. Cash drives in, double team. Loses it out of bounds. Christy oh. Noble got some hops. Yeah, Christy she Noble. Just jumped up in the air. At the vertical. I, I thought Christy should have called timeout when she the, got trapped down here. The turnover goes against Rockcastle County, so a full timeout. Just going to hold it right here, Larry. Let's do the reset. Four, uh, 48 to 46, Rockcastle County leads with one minute and five seconds to go. 
Yeah, that's two really careless turnovers by Rockcastle. Didn't get the ball in bounds. I think did she just dribble it off her foot there, Bailey? She tried to throw it off the she tried to throw it off the Mercer County defender and ended up throwing it off her own foot and hit off her hand. Okay. So uh, now, do you think Drakeford's going to drive and try to score here to tie the game, Tim? I think she will. I think she will. I, you know, one of the things that I don't like, I, I see it all the way down even in Little League games where my grandson plays and everything. I don't like the fact that the coach on the sideline can call the timeouts. I, I would rather the players have to do it. We see them bail out the players so many times. That's the case in college too, though, right? Right. I mean, your, your coach – Wendy Austin can call timeouts anytime she wants, right? Yep, sure can. And she, <laughs> she does sometimes. 48 46. Draper with the basketball. Mercer County trails by two. Under a minute to play now. Draper drives in. Dishes off, has it knocked out of bounds, but stays with Mercer County. 52.2 to go. Yes, she was trying to get the ball to Carlton when the defense all sagged on her. I think she's going to kick out to Dunn, and Dunn's going to hit a three pointer here. That's Larry Vaught's call. Inbounds play comes to Drakeford. Drakeford dribbling out straight away, top of the key. 45 seconds to go. Crossover, now back out. Crossover again. Nice switch. Deep three on the way. Short, no good. Goes out of bounds, and it comes back to Rockcastle County. Didn't yeah. draw any iron, Larry. No, rush that and, and give Rockcastle County credit. They, 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 defended, they defended that well. Made her have to rush the shot. Now Rockcastle's got to see if they can get the ball. She walked. Don't want it in, didn't she, Bailey? Got to try to. So. She couldn't move on that play, could she? No, it was a dead ball. She shouldn't have been able to run. Uh, All right. Didn't. So Shear's going to go to the line now for Rockcastle County. And that's exactly who you want to go to the line. One, two, three, four, five out of six tonight for Shear. She's got 23. And two free throws coming. Free throw on the way, got it. 49-46. seconds to go. Shear dribbles, spins, shoots, misses this one. It's a three-point game, 49-46. Here goes Drakeford, very quickly goes around everybody, shot up no good. Rebound, pulled down, shot up by number 20, Izzy Carlton. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Yeah. Shears a 75% free throw shooter. So. One out of two there. It's a three-point game. Carlton. Now Carlton's only a 57% free throw shooter. She hit two out of two tonight. Big shots for the freshman. Free throw on the way. Got it. Some players, the percentages really doesn't matter when the game's on the line. They just shoot better. That looked very smooth and relaxed right there. 49-47. Got another one coming. It's a two-point lead. 25 seconds to go. Second one no good. Rebound pulled down by Mercer County. And we're going to get a timeout by Haley Spivey. So, Bailey, I want to ask you something here. Larry was talking about sometimes pressure doesn't affect people. What's it like? Tell us a little bit about what it's like to go to the line with everything on the line, half the, half the gym screaming at you, the other half cheering for you. What's that feel like, Bailey? My first collegiate game, I um, had to shoot three free throws with no time on the clock to tie the game to send us into overtime. And it was in that moment, you can't hear anything. It is just you and the rim, and you're just shooting up there. It's just like practice. That's what a lot of kids do when they're growing up. They're in their backyard. They're playing by themselves. They're in their driveway, and they're shooting. Bailey Rucker on the line, shooting three with no time. You drained them all. Did they actually put people around you on the free throw line, or did they let, what, what, did they come off? It was where there was no time on the clock. Everybody was at their benches. The oh game was over. Oh, my gosh. Does it make it even harder? It does. <laughs> it's like shooting a technical free throw. It's scary. Here we go. 49-47. Mercer County has the basketball. 16 seconds to go. I bet Drakeford's going to drive. She does. She's out front now. She drives in, steps back, gets it over to Carlton. Three-point shot on the way. Bounces out. No good. Sheer. Gets the rebound with four seconds to go. I mean, 
it, you can't, I don't think you can fault. Bailey may think different. I don't think you can fault Anna Drake for, for giving the ball up. They had her triple teamed in there. I'm just a little surprised Dunn went in a position for where she could get the ball to her. And Carlton didn't have a lot of choice but to take the shot. But, but she's not a terrific three-point shooter. So, Sheer, first free throw on the way. Good. It's yep. a three-point game, 50-47. to 47. This is big. And it's good. 51-47. Mercer County just let them score, and Rock Castle County is going to win. Three-point shot at the buzzer. No good. Rock Castle County wins it. Final score, 51-47. to 47. They get DCA next. We'll break it down and wrap it up after this. You're listening to Lincoln County's 12th region coverage from J.C. Edelman Gymnasium on WPBKFM 102.9. Hey, Mountain Dew drinkers, it's the Mountain Dew Baja Blast 20th Baja Versary. 20 years of Baja Blast being a Taco Bell fan favorite. To celebrate this year, the tropical lime flavor of Baja Blast is in stores everywhere all year long. 12 months, 366 days. That's right, it's a leap year. That's 8,784 hours where you can find Baja Blast on shelves. So don't just sit there, celebrate with an ice cold Baja Blast. The Mountain Dew Baja Blast 20th Baja Versary. From the classroom to the hardwood, Lincoln County Schools is a proud public school district made up of seven different schools and a technology center. From preschool to patriot, we cherish the opportunity to provide a quality education to all of our students. Lincoln County is not only a great place to learn, but is also a great place to work. We offer many exciting career opportunities. You can help make a positive impact on your community here at Team Lincoln. For more information about our schools, please visit lincoln.kyschools.us or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Are you looking for an ag loan, perhaps to buy farmland, farm machinery, or livestock? My name is Stanley Burris, loan officer with PBK Bank. If you're looking for an ag lender and want to be part of a great community, I am here to help. Most of my fellow loan officers at PBK Bank also have experience in ag lending, and some raise cattle as I do. We understand the risk and rewards of farming. We will make every effort to find you the right loan and guide you through the entire process. There is no better place to raise a family than on a Kentucky farm. Stop by and see me, Stanley Burris, at the Eustonville office of PBK Bank, NMLS number 668032, member FDIC, and an equal housing lender. So many animals in Stanford need a loving home. Contact Lincoln County Humane Society about adopting an animal that they shelter or foster. Caring for your companion can provide a sense of fulfillment and improve well-being. Not only that, but there simply aren't enough homes for every animal born each year, and you can help with that. The Lincoln County Animal Shelter is here to walk you through the adoption process. To you, a pet is a part of your life. To your pet, you're their whole life. The Lincoln County Animal Shelter. 12th Region Basketball, presented by Bob Allen Motor Mall. Congratulations to Rock Castle County as they defeated Mercer County tonight. Final score 51 to 47. DCA won 61 to 47. That sets up the first of two semifinals on Friday night. DCA taking on Rock Castle County. Bailey Rucker, let's get your final thoughts on the second game tonight as Rock Castle County came away with a win 51 47. Uh, Rock Castle faced some adversity in that first half and um, and they uh, they found a way to push through. Uh, Mercer didn't really have a um, an answer for Shear and she just she went off tonight. She carried her team and they just found a way to get the win. And I know you were looking forward to seeing Anna Drakeford play. <laughs> what what did you think of Anna? I I never got to see her in person and she she lived up the hype. Uh, she was she was dominant uh, getting to the basket, getting to the rim, and she showed her three-point ability today, too, and her defensive ability. She was fun to watch. Where is uh, Drakeford already committed, Larry? She is going to Thomas Moore. Thomas and Moore. And I think she'll be terrific. She could play against Center College. No, you don't play Thomas Moore during nope. the season, do you? No. Nope. Used to. Okay. So congratulations to Rock Castle County as they get the win tonight over Mercer County. They defeated Rock Castle, Rock Castle County defeated Mercer County 67-60 to back on the ninth. 
of February. So these two teams had played before. And uh, let's go down the scoring real quick. First for Mercer County, leading the way, leading all scores tonight. 31 points for Anna Drakeford, five points for Sarah Dunn, three points for Izzy Carlton, and three points for Skylar Webb. Larry, you've seen them play before. Not a typical game for Dunn, Carlton, and Webb. Well, now Dunn and Carlton usually score more. Carlton getting in early foul trouble, I think, really threw her off and having to try to defend sheer. I just, I don't know, she just didn't quite, and she didn't get to the boards like she normally does. And then Dunn just didn't have many shots, maybe four shots in the game. Broadcast did a really good job of even when Drakeford penetrated of not sagging off a of Dunn and giving Drakeford the option to throw the ball out to her. Not tailing sheer. 25 points with four fouls. They brought her back in, and as soon as she came in, she hit a bucket. She finished with 25, 10 points for Cameron Cash, 9 points for Taylor King, 4 points for Abby DeLeon, and 2 points for Ella McKinney. Uh, The story of the night in 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 the first half was the injury to Macy Spivey. Now, she came back out. She had it wrapped with ice. In the second half, Larry, she did not come back out onto the game, so that could be a big factor in the game against DCA. Huge factor. It, it could be. I watched Bailey, I thought, break her ankle. Or <laughs> I first thought she broke her, torn a, a muscle or a tendon in her knee, and I thought she broke her ankle in, the, in her conference semifinals. I texted her that night and told her, I was, how was she? And she said she's okay. And I said, well, just watch the game tomorrow. She said, no, I'm playing. And she played 31 minutes the next day, but I didn't think she could walk. And so now she's going to have, what, three days of rest? So right. I wouldn't surprise me if she comes back and plays. So, Bailey, let's look ahead at, what, at what's going on. DCA and Rockcastle County are going to play. DCA defeated Rockcastle County a couple weeks ago, I think, by about 12 points at, at, DCA. at DCA. So this is going to be on a neutral gym here tonight. And uh, the thing about it is, you know, you don't know what your star player is going to be doing, or one of your star players here was the – Star player tonight for Rockcastle County, without a doubt. I mean, what's going to happen the next few days? You go in tomorrow, just get a little bit of the soreness out, kind of shoot around a little bit, and then start getting your game plan together for DCA. Yeah, absolutely. And with a good night tonight, she's going to go in that game with confidence. Uh, Rockcastle's just got to uh, find a game plan to stop the big girl in the middle for DCA. Uh, and <laughs> Shear's got to stay hot, and hopefully the other players that stepped up tonight have the same uh reaction next game and, and Shear could get the the, the dca player in mm-hmm. foul trouble i mean grace has been prone to fouls at time and Shear has the body and the ability to drive inside and jump into her instead of away from her so that'll be a pretty good matchup and then again christy noble she's coached 33 years coached over a thousand games at rock castle county and i would bet my house that whatever she thought it, she would have to do to beat dca in the region she didn't do any of that when they played the first game two weeks no, ago. I, I bet I bet she didn't do anything like what she's going to do Friday night. How would you like to have these three players on a team together? Grayson Bugway, 40 points. Anna Drakeford, 31 points. And Taylor Shear with 25 points. Get those three girls on an all-star team, Larry. It's, it's, yeah, it'd, it'd be okay with me. <laughs> I, I, I thought this game would be real, really good. I, I really thought that Rockcastle might be the second best team in the region. They certainly played that way, especially when they lost their leading score early in the game like that. You just got to give them a lot of credit tonight. And then Mercer ha- had their chances, just couldn't hit the shot right there at the end after Drakeford got them back in the game. Tomorrow night's games will be Pulaski County and West Jessamine in game one, Southwestern and Danville in game two. Bailey, thank you so much tonight. Expert analysis. You've been on the floor. You know what it's like. I've never been there. I played in the seventh grade at Crab Orchard. I was a Cub through and through. Not played since then, Larry. <laughs> no, not sure. And if you like hearing, hearing Bailey, you also want to hear Lilia. They can join us Thursday morning when we're going right. to have uh, Reed Shepherd's sister, Madison, is going right. to join us on WPBK. It's going to be a lot of fun. Look forward to that. And, Larry, as always, Mr. Hall of Fame, thank you for being on with us tonight. I'm sure we broke the Internet with everybody listening to us tonight. We appreciate you being with us. We'll turn it over to Brad and Dustin tomorrow night. One final time from J.C. Edelman Gymnasium in game one. DCA defeated Wayne 61-47. They move on to take on Rockcastle County. They won 51 to 47. Always remember, my friends, drive safe on the way home and win, lose, or draw. 
Jesus Christ is still on his throne. Good night, everybody, from J.C. Edelman Gymnasium for the first round of the girls' 12th region tournament. You've been listening to the 12th Region Basketball Tournament on WPBK-FM 102.9 and simulcast on all of our online platforms, including a video and radio simulcast on WPBK-FM's YouTube channel. This broadcast is presented free to the public as a service of the schools participating in the 12th Region Tournament.